Thank you so much, Sandra okay. Smith. President Obama, meanwhile, receiving some backlash from Republican lawmakers after requesting $3.7 billion from Congress for emergency funding to help manage the immigration crisis along the border. With more, I want to bring in Judge Andrew Napolitano, Fox News a Senior Judicial Analyst. Uh, Judge, good to see you. Thanks for being oh, here. Oh, good to be with you, Maria. Uh, the way the president has handled immigration so far, what, what, what's your take on this? He has uh, blatantly ignored his uh, oath, his obligation faithfully to uphold the laws. The reason the word faithfully is in there is because the, the framers who wrote the oath, it's in the Constitution, the presidential oath, were afraid that presidents would only enforce the laws they agreed with and not enforce the laws they disagreed with. And that's what President Obama has done. So when he said to the 11.7 million illegal immigrants in the country, do A, B, C, D, and E, and I won't deport you. He made up the A, B, C, D, and E. Wow. They're not bad things. They're good things. Yeah. Get a job, get a high school d diploma or an equivalent, learn to speak English, get a social security number, system. pay taxes. But, but he can't change the law by telling people what to do in order to continue to disobey the law. Only the Congress can change the law. Fast forward two years later to the present. That message to the 11.7, I won't deport you if you do the following, resonated with parents sending their children over the border in massive numbers, knowing that they wouldn't be deported. That's why That's we've got all these people at the border right now. Precisely. How can we stop it? Once they're here, they're entitled to the protections of the Constitution. That means they can't be sent back without a hearing. Do you know how timely it would be and costly it would be to hold 75,000 deportation hearings? Out of the question. Once they're here, they're entitled to equal protection of the law, which means food, shelter, clothing, education, health care, and legal services. So the only way to avoid this is to stop them before they get here. You but the president has sent the signal that he won't do that. Well, it's not only that, but he already said, do these four or five things and you can come here. Correct. So how are you going to well, stop them now? Well, you, you, you can stop future people from coming right. in, but the ones that are here, you know, the Constitution is, is a brilliantly written instrument in almost every place where it refers to uh, rights and privileges and things the government must respect. It identifies the possessor of the rights as persons, not American citizens. That use of the word persons means the Constitution applies to whoever is here. Hmm not just those of us who were born here or those who became naturalized citizens. What the is, president knows this. What is the impact, the economic impact of all of these people at the border right now? Catastrophic if you, if you, if you look at it from the point of view of overtaxed governments, local and state governments, not feds because they have a, a cash printing machine, uh, but the, the, the local and state governments, Governor Perry has been the leading cheerleader on this and championing the cause that we can't afford this, you didn't give us any notice of this, and you wouldn't even let us deal with it uh, the way the way we want to deal with this, so the economic impact is actually going to going to present the image of refugee camps. That's one of the reasons that the Obama administration will not even allow local members of Congress to go in and view these places with with uh, uh, television cameras in tow. They don't want that image. So what? So what was all that? Uh, you know, two weeks ago, the president coming out and saying, "If Congress isn't going to do anything, I will." This I mean, this this is what he meant. He is trying to put, in my view as much uh, fire under the feet of re Republicans in the House as he can. He is trying to create and foment and enhance this crisis in order to compel Republicans in the House to come to his side of the immigration debate. What happens now? What, how does this play out? Well, look, either, either we will have a significant change in the immigration law. You know, the last time we had an amnesty, you know who the left-wing pinko president was? Ronald Reagan. I'm being a little sarcastic. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it wasn't a left-wing nice. pinko. That's when we had the amnesty under the big-hearted nice. libertarian views uh, of Ronald Reagan. Now we have the most hard-left president we have ever had in history. He hasn't used the word amnesty because he knows it'll kill him politically, right. but that is probably what he wants and where he'd like us to go. It is the job of the Republicans to find some space between what he wants and what they want to stop this humanitarian crisis, or it will look like a third-world country down there. All of Rick Perry's efforts to the contrary, notwithstanding. Seriously, anything happening before the midterms? Let's face it. No. No. Well, what will happen in the midterms? Happen well, before the next presidential election? What will happen before the midterms is the Democrats' popularity will continue to go down.
until they start speaking out against him. Yep. As very few of them have done, but a few Handful have. Handful have. Handful. Yes. Judge, great to have you on the show. Pleasure. Thank you so much for your insights, sure. Judge Andrew Napolitano. Up next. The